and welcome back to Talk Silent with me, Chris Ryder, and my guests today, who are Sean Hoyle from the Trade Union Movement, and Elizabeth Patterson, who's a grandmother who's determined to do anything except in her sit in her rocking chair and, and knit and, and other classic stereotypes like that that you're, you're going to hit before, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. We were talking before the break, um, and I said I was going to pick you up on this, Sean, was, was your view that the country is still basically a haves and a have-nots. And the point I want to make to you is, is that is that really how you see Britain now? Do you really think it's just you either have it or you haven't got it and there's nothing in between? Because that does sound very much like a, yeah. a sort of view of the 1930s, 1940s, working man cloth cap. Well, maybe uh, you're more on the side of the haves, so you don't see it. But when you look at the wealth... The nothing like a personal snipe. <laughs> of course. Yeah, yeah. 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 Carry on. It's a cat fix. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, if, uh, if you look at the wealth of the world, even, you, know, you look at the 1% that have got 99% of the wealth of the world, it's not difficult then to kind of have the view that so few have, have anything. Um, people work really hard for what they've got. And, you know, I work hard as well. And we were talking, you've yeah. always worked hard. And you're entitled to have something for working hard. But it's so, so difficult to go beyond that because there are people out there with absolutely struggling to get by. There are people at the moment uh, that are, they rely on their tax credits, for instance, to have a decent living. And before tax credits, they, they had the choice of do I work or don't I, but actually I'll get as much money for not working with my family. So tax credits came along as a good way of promoting work. And it has worked, but now they're being taken away and being cut. So families now are going to be back in a situation of, uh, you know, poverty in work, and that can't be right. You know, you, they talk about I think the 1.8 million unemployed in this country. That doesn't count all the zero-hours contracts out there. You've got the actual at the moment in, in the UK, you've got the working poor, people that are at work but they cannot live to any sort of standard. Right, so that's sure, wrong. Yeah. what therefore, Sean is your view of society? What should British society actually be? Should we all be earning the same, no, 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 no more, no less? Uh, you know, you're, you're, you sound like a communist yeah, yeah. now. You're, so you're no, really no, no, I'm not. I, I, I am asking you yeah. what you know. Well, you're a very good question. Yeah. I'll answer it. Yes. Oh, my, I, I'm warming to you. Um, <laughs> no, seriously. Look, I think I'll just give her the programme. She might as well do it. Yeah. There's, <laughs> there's enough money out there for everybody. Yes. And all I'm saying is it be shared more equally. Now, I'm not going to say that I expect a, a neurosurgeon to a earn exactly the same as somebody doing a different job. I'm not even going to name another job. But, and I know people get rewarded at different levels, but you, there's enough money out there that there'd be no one should go hungry. No one sh that we've, we've got enough room in this country, believe it or not, even our small country, still to house everybody But here. haven't you already created the very difficulty that you're trying to get round? I mean, the way? neurosurgeon should earn more than the person you wouldn't name, who, for argument's sake, let's... No, no, I'm, I'm saying... I, I really, who is, go who is going to decide how much they get? Yeah, but yeah, I'm not on about there being this equal path yeah. where everybody walks along the same path and picks up the and same... Yeah, but hang on, if you've earned a lot of money, yeah. say, and you want to go and buy toys, say you go and buy yourself a Rolls Royce, or you go and buy your beautiful yacht, do you despise people doing that? Uh, no, answer the question. Yes. Well, you shouldn't do. No, I they know. They create jobs. Uh, but you asked me to be they honest. They create jobs. Uh, so you uh, are into Who envy. buys a Rolls Royce car? No, but hang on. They yeah. are providing work for people when they buy that Rolls Royce. So you have a problem. You covet other people's things. I want and people you to would share deny, more. No, no. I do. I'm sorry. They're sharing their uh, money by giving Elizabeth, people work. I want people to no, share more. No, you're not. No. Yes, I do. Hold on. If Go I was on, to build you, you a new house, say I was to build a big new vulgar house which we don't need. I'm going to tell people right? we're cuddling during the break, you know, you do know that. No, don't be silly. Look, Come on. if I wanted to build a great big fancy house yes. with slightly vulgar and slightly this and slightly that, I would be employing a lot of people for mm -hmm. a long time. Now you will despise me well, for you, that. Well, you chose a Rolls you, Royce. No. Okay, Rolls Royce, a car. Okay. Still got people that toddle into work, haven't we? Still got people that put the nuts and bolts in. It they are people society. that need jobs. Henry Ford made a famous statement about when they were building cars. And the, the statement was... You can have any colour. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, yeah, so it's a Ford. No, it, but it doesn't have to be a Rolls Royce. He wanted his workers paid a lot more than he was being advised he could get away with paying them. And his, his line was that when the workers can't afford to buy the products themselves, there's no point in, in, in buy, having so the product. Not, you chose a product that was out, uh, out of no, but price hold on. range. Okay, now let's go on for America's Cup pick a, Yacht. Pick an average okay, car. No, Amer no, America's Cup Yacht. Yeah, okay. Okay, a whopping great thing. Very few great syndicates have to fund. You think how many people are getting jobs. You think of the money. Money's made round to go round, and that's what you guys forget. 
Yeah. Doesn't he? He forgets. Well, I think the Why pursuit of capital. Around? The pursuit of capital creates so much problems. It, it creates problems around the whole world. Why do we invade Iraq? It's got oil. Why do we not go and up to other places where that haven't got oil? You know, at the moment we talk about in, in the frigate going out. You, you mentioned earlier. Yeah, yeah which, 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 which we're going to move on to if it, fairly you, soon. And, yeah, and, well, those kinds of issues. Being the little ignorant granny I am, no, I need to people that I respect to make the decisions for me. Okay, I might think but you that. Make, you ba you, you I vote. think you should be a decision maker yourself. Yeah, I, think you you vote. I love yeah. the Minister of Education. Yeah. Well, you make the cool. decision by voting. I teach people how to play, so they've all Now, all something, something very buy. interesting, I just want to bring us back now to, to, to the National Union of Rail and Maritime Workers, the RMT. Uh, in fact, Jeremy Corbyn is a member of its parliamentary committee, I understand, yeah. uh, and, and so is uh, the, the new Chancellor, um, uh, Shadow Chancellor, rather, yeah. Um, Freud at work there, I hope you're right. Freud at work. <laughs> now, you obviously as a, as a member of RMT, a senior member of RMT, have worked with them. So therefore, to a certain extent, you actually know Jeremy Corbyn personally. If not a friend, you know him personally. Well, 2011, 12 and 13, mm. I was on the government of the RMT. Yeah. And our parliamentary group, which was about 24 MPs, includes Caroline uh, uh, Lucas as well, mm -hmm. uh, Jeremy Corbyn, John McDonald and others. And um, we used to meet uh, as a group to talk about problems for workers and they were very supportive. So what, what dealings have you had with Jeremy Corbyn? Well within our, our parliamentary subcommittee, yeah. which uh, I wasn't always a member of but I used to sit on that committee sometimes, um, we would meet, we would go in one of the rooms in Westminster and we would then debate about the problems. Early day motions we wanted to go down uh, in mm. defence of different workers within our uh, transport mm. sector and what he was was someone that was amazingly sincere um, just true to his word the whole time. Uh, you, you were dealing with a man with incredible, um, incredible knowledge, but incredible uh, uh, realism about we can have a different world, we can have a different way. And as much as I like to say it, my well, you, you might have a lot of people uh, that think one thing, and you might be an individual thinking something else. That doesn't make you wrong. Just because you're in a minority doesn't mean your way is wrong. And Jeremy, I think, realised that, and, and others like Jeremy that they can make a difference. Did they ever believe he was going to be the Labour leader? Probably not. Uh, but now he is. He, I, whole, I I'm wholeheartedly believe he will go forward and try and carry out what he's been preaching for all his life. Yeah, but to be Jesus Christ superstar, like he's hoping to be, he's got to look after the economy. He's got to keep but the why incentive. Can't he? Because you, mm. get, you think well, he does have some have very voice. he does have some very worrying statements. It's a little bit tongue in cheek. Look, yeah, the yeah. Uh, he's he's come out with some statements which which I find worrying, and a lot of other people would find worrying. I mean, he he doesn't like NATO. He he wants us to come out of NATO. Uh, he doesn't want to have the armed forces. He he wants them to to to, to be virtually disbanded. And yet, yet at the same time, we that's we have, we have by the way, that's sorry. not what he said about the armed forces at all. What he said was, that what was mm -hmm. put in the media was he wanted to do away the army. But he actually talked about mm. all armies. He looked forward to the day that all armies around the world were gone. A dream on. No, no of yeah, course. dream on, precisely. But it doesn't tell ISIS that. <laughs> no, but it, uh, well, we, we mm. created, don't start about ISIS. We created ISIS, remember? But it's ISIS all didn't, didn't come out of nowhere. Well, we didn't create North Korea, did we? Which, <laughs> which said yesterday that it is now fully nuclear ready to take on the USA in, in any kind of nuclear battle. So, I mean, in the back, with that as the background, I mean, surely any, any talk of winding down British armaments is, is nonsense. And, and does, doesn't that make, make, make the well, Labour Party well, what David Cameron now claims it to be, Trident where he a, says... A where Trident he, is the American Where baby. he says, good union track, mm. sh sh shout me down, where <laughs> David Cameron is now saying that, that this makes the Labour Party a threat to national security. I mean, mm. doesn't he have a point? And all that money spent, they, they employ people. That's all you're worried about. No, look, Come I tell on, when you people have it both ways. When people stopped shoveling coal into our steam engines um, because there was no more steam engine, we didn't, we didn't, so you have to keep steam engines to keep our people shoveling. No, they retrained as diesel engineers or something else. That's good. We know about progression and we're not against it. We're not, we're not Luddites. We actually realise that we have to move with the times, but we want the workers to be, to move with it. And you have to either retrain or you, you have to use new technology. Mm. But it does not mean that the worker always has to pay with their job. Well, dream on mm. if you want a world without armies. I think it couldn't no. be anything more wonderful. Exactly. Now, what's wrong with having aspirations? What's wrong with Because in reality, well, there's aspirations it, and in reality. It so, it so easily gets mistranslated yeah. into 
He wants no army. He wants us out of NATO. Yeah, but you do know, you want armies? What? Well, the media runs the country anyhow. Well, there's, so always, there's always been armies. You probably <laughs> don't want them. That's your particular thing. <laughs> I can't believe you actually say, I, would, I want armies everywhere. No, I don't want armies everywhere, but neither do I want us not to have an army. If somebody else has got an army. Precisely, and those guys yeah. get paid wages. Yeah. And they, they have the, little the, houses and they bring up their The balance children. of power, I think, is, is, is what kept the nuclear yeah. deterrent at bay. For, for so many years, but that's, that's just my own personal view. Of, you, if anyone ever presses the button, it's the end of the world. Not, so, necessarily, not necessarily. Ah, okay, well, so we might get away in a shelter for a while, we might be lucky. But um, in reality, tried in 130, was it 130 yeah. billion pound uh, Trident programme? You're depressing me, you guys, know, and, you're, and you're depressing what? our direction, actually. No, but hang on, hang on. <laughs> so let's where's move to something money? a little no, more where's positive. Where's the money going to? It's yeah. paying wages for people. Yeah. That's all it's yeah. about, it's keeping people employed. It's not that, it's listing yeah, I mean, <coughs> off the Americans. I don't know whether we're going to get through it this side of the break or whether it's going to be the next side of the break, but I'm going to start this question anyway. You said, you know, that as unions, you're very progressive and you're moving with the times and you, you understand all this, yet your union is very much about protecting its jobs. Well, well, of course the union yeah. is about protecting its jobs. All yeah. I'm saying by that, I was talking about a different age of steam yeah. and we've moved forward. Um, for yeah. instance, at the moment we've got something called McNulty Report that wants to take mm. 20,000 jobs out of mm. our industry. Now that's yeah. taking a guard off every train. Now who wants exactly to be on a train saying, with yeah, no the first, guard? first great way, well, yeah. if, if it's completely safe, why, why should there be guards if the, if the technology means that you don't have to have them? Well, why have a driver? Why have anything? Why well, you have to have a driver. No, you don't. There's, 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 there's trains around isn't the world are automated. Isn't it akin to the buses, though, when the conductors came off the buses? Yeah. No, it, look, there was, a, there was an the, awful the, union the, stink, the, the wasn't guard, there, at the time? The guard has a key safety-critical role to play on that yeah. train. Mm -hmm. It's majorly important that guard's on there for safety. And the travelling public want a guard on the train. They don't want to be travelling around late at night mm -hmm. with whoever on that train, knowing that they've got no one on there to, to actually... To, to, to rely on if they need help. It's amazing how we can all wind each other up, isn't it, in the, in the debate such as this. My, t my two guests will be here for the third part of this programme, which is coming up in a few moments. Heaven knows where it's going to go. All topics have gone out of the window. Anything's up to grabs. Do join us for the last part of Talk Solent. See you in a minute. <laughs>